Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Cook and I'd like to present to you a series of how to work with natural inks, how to create them and how to work with them. It'll be a, a few episodes, say three to five, and what we're going to start off with is how to make them. So there are two ways to make natural inks and really I probably use them as more as paints than as inks um, just to make that difference. <coughs> Excuse the audience. You'll see behind me several pieces that virtually all of them actually have been made with my natural inks. They create beautiful marks and respond, you know, absolutely stunningly to different um, applications. These behind me have been done on calico hessian and cotton. I'll also show you some that have been made uh, onto paper, onto watercolour paper. So they're very versatile materials to use and I'm sure that you'll enjoy using them as much as I do. So stay tuned for the first episode in how to make natural inks using Methylated Spirit. Uh, welcome to my work area and as you can see I do a lot of work on this table. It's one of my favourite places to work in my studio. I just wanted to show you these before we begin. These are colour charts that I've created from the various natural inks that I've developed. And um, I now I think have about 110 different colours. But as you can see, um, this one for instance was a pink azalea. And it's given this very interesting different color to what you think pink would give you. Um, there's a whole range of colors, bark that I've used. Um, this one is a water-based ink with black blackberry and plum. Beautiful strong blues. Again also you know your coffee, your everyday sort of coffee will give you beautiful colors. The idea is to be brave and have a go and just to see what you get. Some are more interesting than others, but they will all give a color of sorts. So this is one of my richer palettes. This is um, red cabbage. It's a water base where I boiled up the red cabbage, beautiful blue. Avocado with blackberry. Uh, again, uh, using water, and applying vinegar and soda, wash um, bicarbonate of soda to it, changes the colour. This is a red rose from a friend's place, which is completely different to a rose from another friend's place, this one here. So often where you live, the trace elements in the soil, etc., will give you different colours. And it's all about experimentation. So let's start. The simplest way, this is, I do it, I make my inks, natural inks, in two ways. One is using water, boiling them up, etc. And I'll do another video on that. But today we're going to concentrate on my salt and vinegar. Uh, salt and vinegar. On the methylate spirits method that I use. So this is just normal method methylated spirits. Here in Australia we do have clear. Um, apparently in the UK they put a blue dye in there. So it'd be interesting to see what effect that would have. I wouldn't let that put you off. I'd give it a go. And today from my garden because we're, we're the first week of spring I've actually collected some red azalea in here and some pink 
camellias straight off the bush and they will actually give some beautiful color now I'm going to again from scratch you need a jar now I collect all my jars from my kitchen so peanut butter jars pickle jars you need something that's probably at least 250 to 300 mil as a smaller one if they're small you do all this work and you use it up really quickly today just for visual purposes I'm just going to use a plastic container so we'll just put those aside and we'll work on our red azalea so I just pop them in and I'll put these straight into the jar and you can see there's a few bugs there as well and open up the metho and pour the metho over just enough to cover and then just leave it so I poke it down a little bit and by tomorrow within 24 hours you'll start to have the metho will leach the color out of the flowers I would repeat this maybe two to three times uh, to get a particular strength of color so you can have it as strong as you like and we'll put that aside so that's how you start this is one I've prepared earlier um, and actually I started it in August last year but I've actually refreshed it just a couple of weeks ago so these as camellia so this is a pink camellia in methylated spirits number 20 on my um, color chart and you can just see them in there that the flowers now have been leached of all their color and you can just start to see the liquid has a particular tone so this has actually been changed twice I'm going to do it a third time today so all I have I drain it with a just a sieve into a container and because I don't want to lose all that lovely precious liquid and just shake it out shake out all those hard I mean they're a beautiful color on their own once the color has been leached out of them very carefully you can wear gloves if you like press that down just to capture as much as that liquid as possible don't want to waste it and I'll just pop it aside and now I'm going to fill up the jug the glass jar I'm just going to pull them apart because that way I can get more in with the new petals it doesn't matter if you put you know the stamens or the leaves on the bottom or whatever it might be in there as well it might just add a bit of tonal value now I love these natural inks um, they work on um, cellulose so paper paper uh, cotton I love working with cotton with them so they're cellulose based and also protein so I work with it directly onto uh, felt and particularly if you've included some silk when you felted your felt together the natural inks will actually leach along the lines of the silk and I'll show you 
in another video what those outcomes look like. So that's probably as full as we'll put it. I don't make, I don't pack them right down because I really want that liquid to go get all in. And I can just replace the color. Now I don't know if you can see, but that color now from two leachings of the of the petals has become quite distinct. So I just pour that back in. Press it down. Now, I actually want a little bit more. So I could just leave that happily and I'll change it again in a day or two. But I'm going to also add a little bit more liquid because I use these colors a lot. So I don't want to run out. It'll be a whole year before I can get them back again. So the joy of using natural inks is they are seasonal, but that means you have to make enough to actually keep you happy. Um, you're using materials that you will find just by walking around your neighborhood, your house, your cupboards, all sorts of things can be used. Um, it's really wonderful. I've also made natural inks using the methylated spirits with mushroom, um, which gives an, an interesting color. So there you have it. Stage one is your first lot of leaching and stage two, three, four to expand the color range by just replacing and refreshing the petals while the flowers last. So there you go. That's your first lesson in how to make natural inks using methylated spirits.